Hey everyone, it's Sal EST and welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about the downfall of the once beloved tattoo icon Kat Von D. Kat Von D has been in a number of scandals from rumors of racism, anti-semitism to today where she's being sued for almost a hundred thousand dollars and apparently being forced out of LA. Before we get into all of that, I just need to remind you guys that Mother's Day is quickly approaching. Somehow Mother's Day is the only holiday that just creeps up on me every year, but not this year thanks to my partner for today's video, Ana Luisa. So Ana Luisa is the jewelry brand that I always wear. They have some of my favorite staple pieces. And I'm so excited to let you guys know that Ana Luisa has taken your girl on as a brand ambassador. And my favorite thing about Ana Luisa is their emphasis on sustainability. Ana Luisa is completely carbon neutral from packaging to their products, which is incredible. And you might think that makes the products expensive. And honestly, they do look really expensive, but everything is affordable with jewelry ranging from $39 to higher end pieces. And like I said, a lot of these pieces are just staples in my day-to-day -day outfits. I got these two rings recently from Ana Luisa and this bracelet I adore. I think the bracelet is easily one of my favorite pieces. I also have this pendant necklace and you guys know my favorite dagger earrings are always on. So if you'd like a way to support the channel and get your mom something nice this Mother's Day, you can click the link in the description below for a buy one, get one 40% off sale. I think Ana Luisa makes a great gift because they have a ton of unique styles and really elegant pieces. I know my mom would adore these earrings. All of their jewelry is subtle but super pretty, making it perfect for gifting. So get a head start on Mother's Day this year and click the link in my description for up to 40% off on a really beautiful and thoughtful gift for any mother figure in your life. So thank you so much to Ana Luisa for partnering with me on today's video. With that being said, let's dive into the downfall of Kat Von D. Kat Von D reached her peak in the early 2000s, which coincidentally was also the peak of MySpace. And I think this makes a lot of sense because MySpace was really the perfect platform for the alternative subcultures that Kat Von D definitely embodied. Kat really spoke to all the emo and scene kids online with their studded belts and raccoon hair. Social media was completely new at this time. Online stars were just barely emerging and no one really understood the long lasting effect posting on social media would come to have. So while Kat Von D spoke to this new online generation, that's not to say that she, as well as many other public figures from this time, were really good role models at all. Last year in an interview with the Washington Post, Kat said that she was never canceled, she was just misunderstood. And I wanna believe that that's true, but people who are innocent and really have done nothing wrong generally don't have to upload 11 minute videos explaining why they're not Nazis. So let's backtrack a little bit so we can make sense of this all. Cavandi was born in Mexico and raised in Southern California, and at a very young age, she began to rebel against her parents. Kat started tattooing at just 14 years old and was even sent to Provo Canyon School in Utah, which is the center for troubled teenagers, the same one that Paris Hilton was forced to go to. This was Kat's parents' last ditch effort to get her on the right track. However, Kat ended up diving deeper into the punk rock world, and by the age of 16, she dropped out of high school to pursue tattooing as a full-time career. So in Kat's early teen years, she's already associating with the counterculture in very much like an outcasted mentality. And she speaks on this in that same Washington Post article where she says, Quote, they associated tattoos and all that stuff with riffraff. Back then, tattoos signified that you were either in a gang or a hooker or a drug addict or some kind of, you know, bad seed. And at that time, there really weren't many women pursuing tattooing, especially at such a young age. So in many ways, Kat was setting the stage for many who came after her. Kat quickly landed a role on the reality TV show Miami Inc, kind of by accident, because one of the cast members ended up injuring their arm and Kat happened to be there to be able to fill in. 
In this role on Miami Ink definitely solidified Kat as one of the only prominent female tattoo artists of the time. And as you could expect, Miami Ink being a reality TV show about the daily life at a tattoo shop in Florida, there was a lot of drama constantly. Miami Ink was where Kat got into her first really serious scandal that only really came around to bite her in the past few years. And this was apparently when she was fired from Miami Ink. She allegedly signed a photograph addressed to her former boss, former Jewish boss, with a Jewish slur and drawings of a swastika and a flaming star of David on it. Kat to this day denies having done this and says that the photograph is forged. But obviously when the boss received it, he was incredibly upset and eventually went on to hire a handwriting expert who reportedly said that there's a 99% accuracy that the writing is in fact from Kat Von D. TLC issued an official statement on the matter saying that there's insufficient evidence to say exactly who wrote the photograph. So we can't say for sure either way who actually did this, but unfortunately this isn't the only instance of Kat Von D's alleged anti-Semitic remarks. After leaving Miami Inc., Kat went on to star in LA Inc. at her own studio in West Hollywood, California called High Voltage Tattoo. LA Inc. was one of TLC's most successful shows at the time, and Kat, writing her newfound success, started her own makeup line in 2008, Kat Von D Beauty. The show, along with the makeup line, really pushed Kat Von D into the national public spotlight, and this possibly wasn't something the star was ready for, as every single misstep she made after this point was hugely scrutinized. And I say Kat Von D possibly wasn't ready for this level of public scrutiny because of her mentality going into LA Inc. So in an interview with Inked Magazine, Kat said, Miami Inc. was always monotonous and repetitive. The guys weren't willing to involve their real life in the show. Whereas I promised myself I would talk about anything. People can relate to you more when you're real and you show your imperfections. I'm an open book. Our show is much more rock and roll and honest. So you can see this open and honest mentality that Kat had as she approached her stardom. And I think that that wasn't uncommon with celebrities kind of in that MySpace era. In 2015, Kat named a liquid shade the word selection, which is a German word commonly referring to Nazi death camps. The shade was never released for obvious reasons as this is incredibly, incredibly insensitive. And you don't just accidentally name your liquid lipstick this very specific German word. And in response to this, Kat did say that she kind of didn't know better. Kat said she named the lipstick after the work of an Austrian artist she admires and had no idea about its alternate meaning. Kat said, quote, I don't want to blame my ignorance on not going to high school, but I dropped out of high school when I was 14. I don't really know all of everything, you know? And I would agree with Kat's explanation there if she was still very young, but at the time that she named this lipstick, Kat was already in her 30s. So I really just don't buy this whole ignorance excuse. More alleged anti-Semitic remarks come up for Kat Von D on Facebook in 2017 when she herself posted a video of someone comparing the Holocaust to slaughtering animals. This post did go on to get a lot of backlash, rightfully so, and it just is so strange to me that if she's so apparently ignorant about the Holocaust, why is she bringing it up? She's posting these things, she's naming the liquid lipsticks, she's the one bringing this to the forefront, the thing that she's apparently very ignorant of. So it's really just hard to believe that this is a series of accidents. These various scandals cause the internet to do what it does best, dig up dirt on you from many, many years prior. And that's what they did with Kat Von D. And it turns out that actually quite a few of Kat Von D's ex-boyfriends exhibited racist and anti-Semitic behavior over the years, some while Kat was dating them. So the first example is Kat Von D's ex, Jesse James. Kat and Jesse were in a relationship from 2010 to 2011. So a photo resurfaced of Jesse James giving a Hitler salute, imitating Hitler with a hat and the mustache. 
This is a disturbing photo and I'm not gonna show it, but Jesse's excuse was that he was a history buff and that's why he took this photo. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? But I did just want to set the record straight because many publications will misreport this as something Jesse James did while he and Kat were together. But that isn't the case as the photo was taken in 2004 and Kat and Jesse didn't date until 2010. So we don't know exactly if Kat knew about this, but this just is a testament to the kind of person that Kat was letting into her life. Next, we have Kat Von D's ex, Oliver Peck. If you've seen any of my videos on Ink Master, you'll know that I don't like Oliver Peck. Kat Von D and Oliver Peck were married from 2003 to 2007, and multiple photos of Oliver Peck resurfaced of him in blackface in multiple occasions. And these photos were found on his old MySpace profile, so we don't know exactly when the photos were taken, but the timeline does kind of line up with Kat's relationship to Oliver Peck. Similarly with Jesse James, we don't have a direct tie to Kat, but it does go to show you that there's at least some sort of acceptance of this behavior. And when talking about Kat Von D's partners, I can't not bring up Kat Von D's current husband, Rafael Reyes, who has a swastika tattooed in the center of his throat. Has a swastika tattooed in the center of his throat. He didn't have it. This man currently has a swastika right in the center of his throat. Now, to his credit, the swastika was a Buddhist symbol of peace before it was really overtaken by Nazi Germany. Raphael says it's horrible that the Nazis have overtaken this symbol, but that doesn't mean that it hasn't happened and that most people won't associate a swastika with the Nazis. So it's just such a strange choice of a peace symbol to have on your throat. And it's just a strange coincidence with all of Kat's previous history with anti-Semitic individuals. Again, we're supposed to believe that this is some huge misunderstanding, some weird coincidence. So like I said before, Kat went on to make an 11 minute YouTube video explaining how she is not a Nazi. The video is entitled, I am not a Nazi, I am not anti-vax. And we're going to be getting into the anti-vax claims in a minute, but the video has since been removed from YouTube, but it is still on Facebook. Kat really gives no explanation on the anti-Semitism rumors, except just to say that the photograph from her Miami Ink days was forged, and that's where all of these rumors kind of came about. And she makes a point to say that she's in fact not white, but she is Latina. Many fans were outraged at this video as it seemed like Kat was kind of pushing the blame onto other people, as well as saying that because she's not white, that doesn't mean that she can't be anti-Semitic. Now, I'm not sitting here and saying that Kat Von D is racist or is anti-Semitic. And I don't think it's fair to make those claims based on the evidence that we have, as well as the actions of some of her partners. However, what I do think we can definitively say is that there is a clear trend in history of Kat Von D downplaying the Holocaust, as well as definitely accepting some racist behaviors for individuals in her life. Now, these are definitely some serious missteps, but is this enough reason to cancel Kat Von D? Some people would definitely say this is enough reason, but the scandals do not stop there. Kat went on to run into more backlash based on the names she chose for her makeup products. Around the same time as the selection scandal, Kat also named a lipstick a word that is the combination of the word celebrity and the R word. The R word being the offensive word to describe people with developmental disabilities. I'm not going to say what the shade name was, you could easily look that up, but it is offensive nonetheless, and Sephora removed it from its stores. In response to this, Kat reportedly tweeted and deleted, quote, it's just an effing lipstick. Again, just getting angry with people for getting angry at her. Kat then released a lipstick shade called Underage Red, which had many people arguing that this was inappropriate to have a red lipstick named Underage and that there was an undercurrent of a sexual nature to this name and people spoke out against that. 
Kat responded to this, again, not in the best way, saying that she would not apologize for the lipstick and that she's deeply offended by anyone accusing her of any sort of inappropriate sexual anything. Lastly, with the makeup issues, Kat was accused of romanticizing mental illness when she released her eyeliner line called Basket Case. And a lot of fans were not only upset over the name, but also the promotional marketing material, which included a shot of Kat Von D and Green Day frontman Billy Joe Armstrong handcuffed together. The image was reportedly reminiscent of an image of Sid Vicious and Nancy Spungen, whose relationship involved domestic violence, mental illness, eventually ending with Spungen's murder and Vicious's overdose. So really, it was just one thing after another for Kat until everything really came to a head in 2018 when Kat posted a lengthy Instagram post informing her millions of followers that she would not be vaccinating her unborn son. The post read, quote, Try being an openly pregnant vegan on Instagram, having a natural drug-free home birth in water with a midwife and a doula who has the intention of raising a vegan child without vaccinations. This really was the straw that broke the camel's back in terms of Kat Von D scandals as a huge outpour of negativity came her way after she posted this. This really was the cancellation era of Kat Von D, and all of those past instances of her scandals also really came to light during this period and had many people boycotting Kat's makeup line because of it. While Kat Von D says that this is not the reason, it is speculated that all of this backlash and boycotting is what led to Kat Von D leaving her makeup company. And in 2020, she announced that she would be selling all of her shares in the company back to the owners, Kendo Beauty, and the brand would not be called Kat Von D Beauty anymore, it would be called KVD Vegan Beauty, thus removing her completely from the brand. And later that year, Kat retracted her initial statement on not vaccinating her child on Instagram in an interview with the LA Times when she said, quote, when it comes to the vaccine issue, I was six months pregnant at the time and I was still trying to figure out my birthing plan to have my son. I made a completely thoughtless post on my Instagram on whether or not I would vaccinate my son. And because of it, people think I'm something that I'm not. But the truth is, I'm not an anti-vaxxer at all. I just made a mistake and I was completely uninformed. It was stupid and I really shouldn't have opened my big mouth on the subject. Regardless of if you think that Kat should or should not have lost her beauty brand because of these remarks, it does spark an interesting conversation on cancel culture. Honestly, if you asked me anything about Kat Von D before I did research for this video, I would have just remembered that like, oh, she's an anti-vaxxer now, right? That was just my general perception of where Kat Von D is at in her life based on the top news stories that I've seen of her. And in a way that does make me a part of the problem with cancel culture, as oftentimes there's no room for growth, for people to make mistakes and learn and become better people. The retraction of Kat's initial Instagram post didn't seem to get as many clicks as the initial Kat is an anti-vaxxer news reports, and I honestly just wasn't aware of that. And I don't want to say that all instances of cancel culture are problematic in any way. And I do think that it can be a great tool for social justice, especially for communities of color who unfortunately run into many instances where there is a structural imbalance of power and they are left with little other alternatives. With everything considered, and I think if you really do a deep dive on anyone who has quote unquote been canceled, in the end of the day, there really just is a person who is flawed, makes mistakes, and in Kat's case, honestly has handled them pretty poorly. But I wouldn't say outright that Kat Von D is a horrible person because of what we've learned so far. So it's definitely a very complicated issue, and I'm sure it's something that many of you will be split on. But let's dive into what Kat is up to nowadays. In 2021, Kat put her $15 million gothic mansion up for sale, as well as closed her high voltage tattoo studio in West Hollywood, California, and announced on Instagram that she would be permanently relocating to Indiana. 
Side note, this house is a dream. And if any of you guys have $15 million laying around, I can't get this pool out of my mind. I am obsessed with it. Just imagine swimming in that at night. Oh my God. So this move to Indiana definitely came as somewhat of a surprise for some of Kat's fans as she has made comments in the past that she would never sell her house or leave her tattoo studio. But I think COVID really put a wrench into that. In her Instagram post announcing that she's leaving California, Kat said, quote, with all that's been taking place in California, with terrible policies, tyrannical government outreach, ridiculous taxing, among so many more corruption, we just felt the need to plant roots in a small town where there is nature, where my son can be free to play, and where we can eventually retire one day. So that's what Kat said as to the reason why she's leaving California, but the variety of lawsuits now filed against her might be a bit more of the problem. So in January of this year, Kat was sued by a former employee, actually the shop manager of High Voltage Tattoo, claiming that she was wrongfully terminated after voicing concerns about COVID-19 at work. And here we have another instance of Kat seemingly being very uninformed about a public health issue. So according to the lawsuit, during the original COVID-19 shutdown, Kat Von D planned to open her tattoo shop privately and cover the front entrance of the shop so that the public couldn't see inside. It was reportedly then that the person suing Kat inquired about safety protocols at the shop before returning to work during COVID lockdowns. And this person's concerns were dismissed according to the complaint with Kat Von D stating in text messages, quote, please know that I will not be wearing masks and refuse to do so. And apparently when the tattoo shop later was able to reopen, Kat held firm in her stance not to wear masks, not to do temperature checks, or do any of the guidelines that the CDC recommended for businesses reopening. And if employees were not comfortable with what Kat was doing, they were instructed to stop working for her. And when employees came in with masks on, Kat reportedly said, so you're gonna wear maxi pads on your face? So this type of behavior, based on what we've gone over in this video, definitely isn't surprising, but it still is pretty disappointing. But that's not all that Kat is dealing with as it came out just earlier this month that the landlord of High Voltage Tattoo is suing Kat Von D for $92,000 in unpaid rent and damages to the property. The lawsuit claims that Kat Von D owes several months of rent from 2020, as well as future rent in 2022. And there's a variety of remodeling fees that have to be done to transform the place back to the original state before Kat had moved in. So that is where Kat's story seems to come to an end. If there are any updates in the next few days, I will have them in a pinned comment down below, but you guys will have to let me know, what do you think? Do you think Kat Von D has turned into fully the villain and now she has to flee LA? Or do you think that this is a deeply flawed person who has made many public mistakes and should maybe be forgiven for them? For me, there's just too many wrongs here and not a lot of rights, especially considering how she treated her employees during the COVID-19 pandemic. I feel like that really says a lot about a person and a business owner. So I really can't stand beside her actions there. But you guys will have to let me know down below your thoughts of what you think of this whole strange situation. I wanted to just quickly thank Anna Luisa once again for sponsoring today's video. Like I said, you guys can click the link in the description for up to 40% off and get a really nice and thoughtful Mother's Day gift. But if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you have, leave me this emoji in the comments so that I know that you are a real one. Bye everyone.